Hello, and God bless you for coming your way by the word of God. I bless God for your life, and I say God enrich you as we hear the word of the Lord today. Before we proceed, can we share a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for a time like this in your presence. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We thank you for how good you are unto us. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We, your children, rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. If it had not been you on our side, where would you have been? Beloved of God, God bless you again. And may the Lord increase you as we hear the word of the Lord. We've been studying faith for the past weeks now. We've been talking about faith in the area of... Um, our walk as a believer, as a child of God. And also today, last week we started faith in the area of works. So today we still want to continue faith in the area of works. And we majored our scripture on James chapter 2, James chapter 2 verse 1, that says, my brethren, want to recap last week, he says, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of glory with partiality. And he says that the faith that we have, the faith is not of our own, the faith is of God. And if the faith is of God, it's very important that as a child of God, we need to understand that we need to be saying, James is saying that we should not hold it lightly. We should not downplay the faith. We must really know why we are called into the faith. And if we are called into the faith, he's telling us that the faith is not of ours. The faith is of God. And if the faith is of God, not just an ordinary God, but it's a God of glory. But what? who is the God of glory that is talking about? He's talking about the glory that he that is talking about. He's talking about the magnitude of God. And if he's talking about the magnitude of God, he's just telling us that the glow, the faith that we are in as children of God, it is not faith that is of any, we need to take it lightly, I repeat, we need not take it lightly, but rather we must rather take it very serious. And goes ahead, James goes ahead to say in James chapter 2 verse 1, he says, let us not handle this faith with partiality. Let us not handle this faith by partiality. When we talk about partiality, partiality means that you are trying to play favoritism. You are trying to use the faith to your advantage or to people that are in your clique's advantage. And James was trying to let us as believers of God to desist from it. To shy away from that. Other version says, the Greek version says that let us not use the faith for discrimination now let me give you a little background about it it was when james was saying that it was something that was going on in the old testament church in the in the in the bible days and when it was going on in the bible days people want to people took advantage of the faith and when they took the advantage of the faith they wanted to use the faith to what will benefit them so james realized that the faith, the way they are supposed to work the faith, they are not working the faith the way it's supposed to be. So James went ahead to advise them and to tell them, we are getting it all wrong. And since we are getting it all wrong, let's go back to basics. If we go back to basics, then this is how we must apply it. So all he was telling them is that the faith one is not of ourselves. The faith, James chapter 2 verse 1, he says, my brethren, which means that he was trying to be relational. He was trying to be relational and not only relational, he says what? Let us not hold this faith. That is not of our own, but the faith is of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says what? The Lord of glory, which means that he emphatically pointed to who the faith belongs to. And then he says what? Let us not hold it with partiality. And let us not discriminate. So that is what we talked about last week. Now, today we are going to talk about faith in the area of works. 
faith in the area of works because sometimes we've come into as believers sometimes we think faith is only about us and last week i stress on it that faith is not only about us our faith that we have is for others to also benefit from it there must be benefactors in our faith people must see the faith that we have and people must give glory to god people must see the faith that we have and people must be motivated they might be they should be motivated people must, must see the faith that we have and to be geared on so if your faith is not is not giving glory to god and your faith is not motivating others and your faith is not keeping people in the kingdom you must question it so now somebody may say how would you prove this well, today we want to talk about faith in the area of works faith in the area of works now when we talk about faith in the area of words this works this is what i'm going to say our works must complement our faith our works must complement our faith now what is complement what is compliment? Compliment is, is another word for what companion. Which means that faith should not walk by itself. Faith must have a companion. Our faith must have a companion. Our faith should be uh, should be should be complemented, and that should be our complement. The complementary should be the works. If only you have faith and you don't have works today bible is saying that our faith will not save you so now we want to go into it and we're going to go into the scripture again we're going to go to james chapter 2 james chapter 2 verse 14 james chapter 2 verse 14 so he says what what profit a man my brethren though a man says he has faith but has no works can faith save him he says if a man says he has what would it profit a man if he says he has faith and has no have works how can this work your faith cannot save you if you don't have works which means that as a child of god you need to come to a state in your life that your works must go hand in hand with your faith if your works is not going hand in hand with your faith then there is something wrong because it says what he asked a question can faith alone save you which means that yes we are saved by faith but we need to understand there was works that preceded our faith the faith that was saved to us there was works that preceded and what is the works christ came to die on the cross for me and you and when he did that he did that in the eye of faith and since the eye of faith has brought us into the kingdom now as a child of god as a beloved of god what you have to do is to keep that faith go in to keep whatever has been given unto you as a cherished child of god what you must do is also to emulate that is why paul was saying that i have fought a good fight of faith why was paul saying that paul was trying to make timothy the son understand that the child that the path has been told or the path has been created for the child and when the path has been created the child must also follow suit it's the same way as children of god we need to understand that yes christ did the work for us yes it's very important and since christ did the work for us and has brought us on in this earth to occupy till he comes we must also also do the works or else the work the faith that has been entrusted in our hands is null and void the faith that has been entrusted in our hands is null and void because why it is our works that would justify our faith our works would justify our faith 
So you need to understand that as you are in this Christian walk, you need to understand that you cannot only be walking solely on faith, abandoning works. So he's saying that, he says, what would it profit a man, my brethren? Though a man may say he has faith, but has no works, can faith save him? So now, this is a question that is thrown to, James is thrown to us. That if only, if we can only walk just out and say, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, and begin to boast in that faith. Poor, uh, James is telling us that you must also have works to go with it. If your works, you don't have works to complement your faith, then and then, Paul, uh, James is trying to make me and you understand that we stand at a verge or at a brink where it's not going to yield any results. We are going to, I repeat, if our faith, we are walking only on faith and not accompanying it or not having works to complement it, what we are doing is we are on the verge of doing something that will not yield results. So James is trying to tell you that faith alone cannot save you. Faith alone cannot save you. Then he goes ahead to now define when he's talking about works, what he means by when he's talking about works. So he says, if a brother or a sister be naked or destitute, of daily food and you say unto them depart in peace and be warm and filled not understanding yet to give them those things that are needful to their body what would they profit which means that the fact that you are in the faith what do you need to understand that you have to show works people in the faith alone people in the faith also need to be what giving the as uh, faith need to be extended unto them faith need to be extended unto them through works child of god you need to understand that we must learn this faith walk we cannot only walk this faith walk with our works which means we must prove unto others that we are really called of faith. We are students of faith. We are children of faith. We understand the faith that we are in. Because if we don't do that, what we are, what we are doing is we are trying to make people understand that or we are belittling the faith that we have. And James is saying that as children of God, we must exemplify the faith by works. And he's saying that we have to identify the need in our fellow brethren. And when we identify the need in our fellow brethren, we must meet the need. We don't have to dismiss them to go in peace. But rather, what should we do? We must be able to what? Show care. So now, the point here is this. Faith must prompt care. Faith must prompt care. Faith, our faith that we have, must go transcend past just, talk, faith, just talking about faith. It must transcend past what, uh, what we, we believe and begin to what? Walk the walk. Which means that not only talk the talk, but what? We must walk the walk. So faith means that we have to what? Our works is a way of what? Exemplifying the work of Christ. Now, if you go ahead on verse, if you just join us, we are reading James chapter 2, verse 17. We are, we read, we read 17. We are now reading 17, 16. We are now reading 17. It says, even so, if you have not works, it is dead. If you have no works, your faith is dead. Which means, and also goes on, other verses says, if you have no works, you are alone. Which means that as a child of God, your faith, if you are only walking in faith and not in works, you are alone. 
which means you can be very low you can be in this faith walk but if you really don't understand what you need to do, your works, what you need to do as a child of God in this faith, you can be very lonely. But may it be far from us that as children of God, we will, we will only dwell on faith and not on works that will be alone. May it be far from us, I repeat. Because why? If your faith must also go with what works. And verse 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my I'll show thee my faith by my works. James was now provoking them and saying that if a man says he has faith and does not have faith, he has faith and does not have works. He has faith and does not have works. That person cannot match up to him because why? He has the faith and he has also the works to match up. Child of God, we need to understand that it's very important that we need to exemplify the works of God. We need to exemplify the works of God. And when we begin to exemplify the works of God, now, then and then, it makes our faith complete. Somebody may say, well, man of God, God did the work for us on the cross. So why should I do? Yes, God did the major work on the cross. But still, it is for me and you. That is why he says, well, let us work our own salvation with fear and trembling. Christ, salvation is free. Christ came to die on the cross for me and you. But still, we need to work on our own salvation. Why? Because it is very important that something that has been given unto you free, you have to cherish it. And that is the work. You have to what? Cherish it. You have to appreciate it. You have to keep it and it let it mean something to you. If it does not mean anything to you, then the thing has no value. And that is what James is saying. That as a child of God, what we need to do is we must not only walk in the faith blindly, but we must have works. We must also identify the need in others. Now, why would he, he say that? Because why? We are now the extension of the hand of God. We are now the extension of the feet of God. We are now the extension of God to the world. And since we are the extension of God to the world, the world is now looking unto us as faith ambassadors to what? Exemplify Christ. And the only way they can see the God in us is by our works. It's by our doings. That is why somebody can say, I thought you said you were a Christian. I thought you said you were this and this. Why are you not exemplifying? If it's that, if it's not that relevant, why would such a person make a comment? That comment. Because why? They expect the works. And when they expect the works, and when they see that we are exemplifying the works, then and then they will see that we are true disciples of Christ. So James was trying to make it understand that we cannot only sit on our hands. We cannot only hold back. We cannot only be self-conscious or we cannot only be thinking of us and thinking that or say to ourselves that we are in faith and not doing anything about it. Faith means that we must do something about it. We need to work the works. We need to work do something because it is not everybody that will see faith or will walk in faith the way we are but he makes he makes it clear that the faith that we are in the faith must be what exemplified in works now as we go on we begin to see the most important things about faith now so now let us go ahead let us go ahead and say and, and, and read on. Verse, so James was saying, you may say you have faith. Yes. But if you have no works, just as he said before, you are alone. But James is also saying, if you say you have faith and you have no works, let me also prove to you 
my works with my faith. Now, let's read verse 19. Verse 19 says, Thou believest that there is only one God. Thou, does, thou believest well, but the devil also believes and trembles. Now, this is what he says right here. He says, you believe there is one God. Even the devil believes that there is one God and also trembles about it. So it is not only about your belief. What he's trying to make you and I understand is this. Let us not only focus on ourselves. What we think we know, the world also know it. But the only way the world can be convinced of what brings an exception to our faith is our works. So he's saying that we believe there is one God. The world, even the devil, believes there is one God. And the Bible says what? Not only do they believe, they tremble about it. They are in awe about it. They are in awe, awe about it. So if they are in awe about it, what is telling me and you is this. Let us do something about it. Because what we think we know, the world also knows. But still, it is very important that we do, we, we do our works. Then verse 20 says, thou, thou will know, O vain man, that faith without works is is dead it says you would know oh vain man that faith without works is dead now he goes ahead to say this that if you don't express your works and you are only walking in faith your faith is dead and not only is it dead it's saying that your faith is what you are a vain man how would you feel when somebody says that your works is vain, uh, your, your faith is vain. Because why? It is your works that will prove your faith. So now, what is trying to tell me and you is this. Our works promotes our faith. Our works promote our faith. We must be very careful how we project our faith. And the only way the world who see the God in us or the faith that we talk about is by our works. And then he goes ahead to say in verse 20, uh, verse 20, uh, verse 21 of James chapter 2, he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Now, now you somebody may say this. Well, if you look into Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 12, it was saying that faith, because of faith, it was counted against Abraham as righteousness. It's very true. It's very true. But now, James still goes ahead to now explain what makes the, 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 the fate of Abraham, our father, complete. James goes ahead to say that it was the works. It was the works. It was the works, not only of the faith. Not only of faith. Because why? God has already promised Abraham. But it got to a time. God had to what? Test Abraham. And God said that the day after Abraham had fulfilled his part, he says, now I know. In blessing, I will bless you. So which means that it is the works of Abraham that warrant his faith. It was the works of of Abraham that warrant his faith. So, it's very important that we must do the work. We cannot only hold on to faith and say that with I have faith and since I have faith, then that is all. No. We must walk or we must do the works. We must do the work. And if we don't do the work, we are not walking in faith. So he goes ahead to say this. He says what? Abraham, it was the works of Abraham that justified his faith. Today, what is justifying me and you our faith? Ask yourself this question. 
What justifies our faith? What are we doing in the house of God? What are we doing at our job place? What are we doing in our vicinity? What are we doing in our look uh, in our area or in a society that warrants our faith? What is what world will people say? What will, what will prompt others to I mean to see that we are distinct because of our faith? What is what works are we doing? So James was going ahead to say this. He says, What Ab Abraham, our father, if our father has done it, that is what is that is what is, it, it prompts us to also do it. So he says, What Abraham did it. Now, let's look at the effects or let's look at the hierarchy, the chain of command. Christ did it. God did it through Christ. And Christ also, God what? Did it through Abraham. Abraham also what? Exemplified it. And if we are saying we are children of Abraham or descendants of Abraham, if our God who had proven, who tried to test Abraham to do it, and not only that, gave his only begotten son for us to be in the faith, he's also expected us to do it so somebody may ask well if god did it for us and abraham also did it why should we do it so which means after all then this is not fair it is fair it is fair if something is done for you for the people for the generations yet unborn you are also making a legacy for them. Understand this. I said it from the beginning. The faith is not only about you. It is about others. Faith is not only about you. It's about others. So, if you are walking this walk and somebody has set the pace for you, as a child of God, you must also follow suit. And then this is why we went to Hebrews uh, chapter 12, where Demo, uh, James, uh, where Paul was en encouraging Timothy. And when he was encouraging Timothy, he was telling Timothy to run the race. We talked about it three weeks ago. And now he's talking to, he's also telling us, James was also telling us that we must also what? Do the same. So it is very important that we walk. We show our works. Then he now go ahead to what? Tell us exactly what our father Abraham did. So he says what? When Abraham offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. My question to you is, what would you be remembered of? What would you be remembered of, child of God? What will I be remembered of? What will I be remembered of? It's my works. It's my works going to complement my faith. And if my works will complement my faith, then I am whole. I am not vain before God. Then I am whole. I am not vain before God. So my question to you is this. Faith must always have what works. Our faith must always have works. Because if our faith has no works, then our faith is dead. Verse 22, he says, By faith, by works, our faith is made perfect. This is the last point I want to share on you today. By works, our faith is made perfect. By works, our faith is made perfect. Child of God, I want to say this to you. Let us focus on our works. And when I'm talking about works, I'm not saying something to promote ourselves. No. 
but something that will promote God. When we see the need in the house of God, when we see the need in our fellow brother, when we see the need of people not even of our same faith, who don't belong to our faith, we are what? Showing our works. Let people testify of it. Let us stop talking too much about our faith. And let us exemplify our faith through our works. Let people see our works. And let them give glory to God. James is saying here that faith and works goes hand in hand. If you don't have works, if you don't have works, child of God, your faith is dead. If you don't have works, child of God, your faith is dead. May it never be said that you only have faith, but you have no works. James was saying, faith alone cannot save you. Remember, on the day of judgment, based on our works, we will be called thou good and faithful servants. We will be judged based on our works. We will be judged, I repeat, based on our works. So whatever you are doing, do it and do it well. Whatever you are doing, child of God, do it and do it well. Because why? It is your works and your faith that goes hand in hand. When you saw that brother who was in desperate need and came to you, and you only, you had it, but you could not give that person, meet that need, help, uh, help that brother, that James is making me and you understand that we are not showing our works. When people came into our lives and we begin to boast of what we have and we see the need, but we try to what boast of it, just to rub it in their face and not meeting that need. James is saying that we are not exemplify our works so today it's a question to me and you that let us do the work Christ did it for us Christ did it for us and if what Christ did for us if it means something to me and you we must also be willing to exemplify understand this the word Christian means you are a follower of Christ. And a follower or imitator of Christ, which means that you are doing what Christ did on earth. And understand this. We, we as children of God has been given the authority to rule this earth. That is why he says, Occupy till I come. Occupy does not mean take the space and don't do anything about it. Occupy means that let's oversee the earth. Let's oversee the earth. Let's what? Let's make sure that people are what doing what is expected of them. And the only way people can, we can only stand before God on the day of judgment is when we have done the work. It's a challenge to you and me. Somebody may say, well, this is a very tall order. It is not a tall order if God is with you. You cannot do this by your own. By your strength, you can do this. But if you have God on your side 
and you solely believe that you are taking this walk with God, definitely God will see you through. Today, let us not only boast about our faith, but let us also what? Do the work. When we see the need in others, when we are in the church, when we are everywhere, let us see that everywhere is a place for us to what? Promote Christ. Some people, they may need prayer. Some people, they want to have they want to, you to listen to them. Some people may also want you to help them some way, somehow. So now, by that works, and as it is done in love, then and then, we are true servant of God. Then we are true disciples of God. Child of God, I want to leave this with you. What would you be remembered of? What work would you be remembered of? Abraham, our father, was remembered based on his works. If we go down there, if we go down in the scripture, we go down in the scripture and we go, there, are, there were accounts of people that were even listed. If we read verse 25, verse 24, he says, see then how by works, a man is justified, not only by faith, which means your works will justify you. Your works will justify you. And I'm not talking of just works. I'm talking of godly works. He says what? It is your works that will justify you. Verse 24 of James chapter 2, verse, verse, uh, James chapter 2, verse 24. He says, ye see then how that by works a man is justified not by faith only which means your faith alone cannot justify you beloved this is a very serious talk he says your faith alone cannot justify you so if you are clinging onto faith all this time only onto faith without works He's saying you, are, you will not be justified only by faith. Your works will also what justify you. Because your faith and your works go hand in hand. And it's verse 25, he says, Likewise, also, not Rahab the hallowed, justified by his works. Even somebody who was not in the faith at that time, her works, she was a hallowed. Which in the Christian circles, that was unheard of. In the Christian circles, it is wrong. But she did her work. Now, does it mean that we should just go about and do everything we want? And do, no. No. That is not the point. The point is, as a child of God, as you have come to the faith, as you were walking solely with God, you must also what? Do the works. Do the work. Because the work will be counted against you. And that complements your faith. Maybe you are in the church today. Somebody offended you. And because the person offended you, what do you normally do? You don't do it again. You stop doing it because you're like, I can't be bothered. Today, I challenge you that go back. I challenge you, go back because the works is not about you. The works is not for you. The works is for God. And don't let what you stop doing hinder somebody else's faith. Now it's making me to one. It's it's suggesting to me and you that let us do the work whilst we hold on to faith. Let us do the work whilst we hold on to faith, because faith and works go hand in hand. Your faith alone cannot save you. Your works will complement your faith. No, 
that we walk by faith and not by sight. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as, as your personal Lord and Savior, I introduce God to you. He's a God that will never disappoint you. He's a God that will never fail you. All you have to do is avail yourself unto him. And if you avail yourself unto him, he will use you. All he needs is an empty vessel, a willing vessel. Today, be that willing vessel. Avail yourself unto him. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come just as I am. Be my Lord. I entrust myself unto you. I want to walk with you. Help me walk this walk. Beloved, if you just said this simple prayer, believe in it. Have faith in your prayers. If you don't have faith in your words, your words are vain. Have faith in your words. Find a Bible-believing church and give yourself to the service of God and your life will never be the same. If you are also in the Christian circles and today something happened and because of that you decided to shine away from works doing whatever you're supposed to do. I entreat you, go back. I entreat you, go back to it. Go back to it. Because your faith, your works complement your faith. I repeat, your works complement your faith. May the Lord bless you till we meet next week. God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Shalom.